Joining us in the studio is Andrew Cahoon. He's head of Asia Pacific Provinces at Sovereigns at Fitch Ratings. Uh, so you're the one who makes the tricky decisions, I'm assuming, here. With respect to Asia, sure. Yeah. Just, I mean, I'll come to Asia, but I just want to get your view as to how that links up what happened in Europe. Um, I know that's Moody's as well, and it's not your business. But. Yeah, as you know, Richard, we don't comment on the other agencies' yeah. actions. But Fitch's view with respect to uh, Europe is that uh, the EU will avoid either a debt union or the uh, default and exit from the euro of a, a large, systemically important country. And we expect that the eurozone will continue to muddle through in, in the fact, way that we've got used to. Um, yeah, as, as I say, uh, we don't expect the exit from the euro of any of the systemically important countries. Uh, so we think that the um, eurozone will continue to muddle through in the way that we are getting used to, but that obviously has financial costs um, and costs for growth in those countries, and that's why, or part of the reason why we have a number of sovereigns in that part of the world on negative outlook. Okay, well, of course, if you do have debt problems and debt servicing, it is an interlinked world. How does it play out in Asia, and how does it affect the sovereign ratings of countries in this part of the world? Well, Fitch, when we compiled our previous round of uh, forecasts at the end of last year, we already expected the Eurozone to be broadly stagnant this year. Um, the economy there may be heading for a, a mild recession. Uh, but be that as it may, uh, for Asia, the key channels of impact, as I see it, are through, firstly, trade and, secondly, financing flows. And they could be linked to the extent that uh, European banks are important in providing trade finance for uh, companies here in Asia. Now, the good news on that is that the ECB's liquidity provision uh, late last year appears, and it's early days yet, but appears to have headed off what may have been turning into a credit crunch in the Eurozone. And that, in turn, uh, points towards more optimistic financing um, terms for Asian corporates. Well, what I did is uh, banks uh, you know, delevage, build up the ba balance sheets, mm. and that money finds its way somewhere, doesn't it? And it quite often finds its way here. That's right. Um, the other key sort of uh, transmission channel, I suppose, is through trade. And some of the work we've done recently, and we were talking about last week at a um, roadshow on sovereign credit that we did in Asia, uh, was looking at the correlation of Asian countries' exports versus retail sales in the Eurozone. And uh, China, you won't be surprised to hear, is one of the uh, most correlated countries, so its exports most exposed to the slowdown in the Eurozone. Um, Philippines, at least I was surprised to see, also up there. Okay, well, China's the one which a uh, hard landing, everybody's been talking about that, and it may well avoid it. But, you know, how do you as a ratings agency look at China? The bond market is fairly nascent. Uh, which way are you pointing to? Uh, well, we have a negative outlook on China's local currency, double A minus rating, which was assigned last April. Uh, the foreign currency... Not changed since then? Uh, not changed since then. Um, ratings, as you know, are through the cycle uh, indicators of relative sovereign credit worthiness, and we don't tend to respond to high-frequency data um, in and of itself. Now, the, the key drivers behind that negative outlook and what we'll be looking at as we move to resolve it are, uh, firstly, uh, concerns over the banking system, um, secondly, some concerns over the economic outlook in the short term, particularly stemming from the construction sector. Um, thirdly, on the public finances, uh, the local government debt pile and how that is resolved. Andrew, great to have you on the programme as ever. Andrew Cahoon there from uh, Fitch Ratings.